Welcome to our 13th Trader Chat. It's the 16th of November and uh, as always, uh, first of all, I need to go to disclaimers to keep our lawyers happy. Um, the first disclaimer uh, explains risk and it uh, states that all trading involves risk. Please be aware of and accept this risk before doing any trading. Never trade with money you cannot afford to lose. The next disclaimer has to do with the past performance. The past performance of any trading methodology is no guarantee of future results. And I'm making no representation in this webinar that any account will achieve profits or losses similar to those discussed. And you should be aware that all results should be considered to be hypothetical unless otherwise specified. Hypothetical performance results have many inherent limitations and unlike an actual performance record, do not represent actual trading. Let's speak quickly about NetViewer. I think uh, most of you are probably familiar with NetViewer, but for the new people um, out there today, um, please be aware the best way to ask questions is to type a message into the chat window. If you cannot hear me properly, um, please note that you should adjust the speaker volume in the VOIP tray uh, in your NetViewer on the right-hand side of your NetViewer window um, because that is separate to your um, system's um, general speaker volume. Um, so some people complain they can't hear and um, that's all they need to do. If you'd like to talk to me and, um, and you have a headset, then right click to indicate you'd like to do that. Also please enter a chat message saying please enable a microphone. I can only enable um, a li limited number of microphones at any one time. Um, uh, there is a slight delay in the audio which is why um, uh, entering a chat message is definitely the easier way of uh, communicating with me. Um, but I'd be very happy to chat to you if, you, if you'd like to do that. Uh, please also be careful of mouse clicks. Uh, you should be aware that any time you click your mouse in the NetViewer window, it displays a large, brightly colored arrow with your name on it. And uh, that's very useful if you're trying to point something out, such as a, um, a trough of the 18-month cycle. But it is a little distracting if you're not trying to point something out. So please try to avoid doing that. Um, online workshops. Um, uh, just a reminder about the online workshops. Um, they are in full swing. We have um, our next online workshops are in fact uh, our next series starts this uh, this weekend, this Saturday. Um, it's for the Australian time zone this uh, this Saturday. I think there's one spot still available if um, uh, um, uh, if you'd like to do uh, do do a workshop. They really are the best way of learning how to use Sentient Trader and getting to um, getting to understand cycles really really fast. Um, if you're a little hazy about any details about Hearst cyclic analysis or trading using Hearst's trading methodology or working with Sentient Trader at all, a workshop will get you up to speed really, really fast. And uh, so I would recommend them. They're a lot of fun. Uh, they are Saturday sessions of, of five hours each. And um, we take some breaks, of course. Um, only a few places left for this year. Um, this Saturday is the last workshop for the um, Australian time zone. Um, Australian time zone is sort of 6 o'clock in the morning um, for uh, Central European time. So it's not out of the question if you're in Europe to do um, an Australian time zone uh, workshop. Um, and we're taking bookings already for March of next year. So um, avoid disappointment by booking now. I know a lot of people um, are, are thinking about doing workshops and uh, I, I would really recommend it. Um, so give us a shout, send us an email and uh, um, book your place. I think, as I, as I mentioned, I think there's one place left for this coming Saturday. Um, otherwise, we have one more workshop for the um, American Canadian um, time zone, um, which is late afternoon, um, evening, uh, European time zone. And uh, of course we have our Sentient Trader um, uh, chat um, service uh, is busy going. Beat the isolation of trading if you want to join us um, or join other Sentient Trader users. It's an informal online chat, exchange ideas, upload files, and uh, hang out with other Sentient Trader users. It's not a monitored forum, so um, so you shouldn't send any support issues uh, or any questions there. Although uh, certainly um, that hasn't been a, hasn't been an issue. If you haven't received your invitation and you are a Sentient Trader user, please email us at um, info@sentienttrader.com. Uh, right. Um, 
Today, I'm going to be speaking about emerging markets and whether and of emerging markets can shed any light on other analyses, in particular analyses of the uh, euro to US dollar um, or the American market. Um, so um, it's a really interesting thing to talk about, um, and I welcome your ideas. I see there are several chat messages. I, I think perhaps it's uh, just people saying hello. Yes, <laughs> everybody saying hello. Good. So. Um, Let's uh, get down to the to the main subject and take a look at some emerging markets. And uh, oh, let me close that window um, before it um, chews up our internet. Um, there we go. All right. So here I have um, several charts open in Sentient Trader. Um, I, as, as 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 I think you all know, I'm a South African and um, and I spent most of my life living in South Africa. And uh, it was always really, really interesting for me to analyze the South African stock market and to um, compare the analysis that I was doing on the South African stock market to the analysis that, um, that I was generating on, uh, on the American market. I used to trade, uh, um, I used to trade futures contracts um, from South Africa um, on the S&P 500 and the um, NASDAQ and the Dow Jones um, uh, well, when they when they introduced a mini Dow Jones contract, I started trading it, um, and uh, 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 it it was a really interesting thing to do to be trading futures on the American market when I was living uh, um, in South Africa, and um, and obviously there were times uh, time zone issues and uh, all kinds of things. But what I found uh, very interesting was that an analysis that I would do on the South African market um, would often shed some light on what was happening. In, in, in the American markets, and I would use my analysis of the South African market as a, um, as a, cor as a, um, a corroboration, if you like, of the analysis that, uh, that I was looking at in the, um, in the American market. And um, um, John posted a really interesting um, uh, uh, article on our Sentient Trader Users Forum uh, last month about, uh, about, the, uh, about emerging markets and how they can shed light on what's happening in the American market. So I thought it would be a really interesting thing to talk about uh, today. So I'm going to be looking at um, two, uh, two emerging markets, um, the uh, Sensex index, which is uh, Bombay Stock Exchange, and, um, and the All Share index, which is um, South Africa's um, stock index, if you like, the Johannesburg Stock Exchange um, All Share index. And uh, so the two are uh, both emerging markets, and the ana and the analyses are um, are really quite interesting, and uh, and I think they shed some light on what might be happening in the in the U.S. markets at the moment. I'm not going to come out with any um, sort of strident, uh, definitive um, uh, answers because I think that the comparison of an emerging market with the American market is a very subtle thing, and that's really what I'm going to be talking about. Um, uh, um, sometimes uh, the emerging markets um, uh, uh, give definite answers. Sometimes, sometimes they don't. And I think at the moment, in fact, uh, the answers that the emerging markets are giving aren't very definite. So um, if you've tuned in especially to hear the definitive answer of what the emerging markets are saying, um, I'm going to spoil the fun immediately by saying I think that at the moment they're not – um, unfortunately, uh, being very, very definitive. But uh, let's first of all have a look at these, um, have a look at these markets. And uh, where should we start? Let's start with the uh, All Share Index, the um, South African, the South African Index. There we go. And um, this is a chart. This is a chart based on median price because I've uh, cobbled together two separate um, pieces of data to get a to get a longer term analysis. Um, the data that I mostly use for the South African market is fairly short term, um, and I wanted to take a look at a, at a much longer, um, uh, much longer time. Let me just turn off the um, sentient trading information because that's not uh, really of much interest, and let me uh, turn on semicircles. There we go. Um, so. Um, you can see that the an, the analysis that uh, sentient trade is working with at the moment. Um, has a four and a half year trough in um, 1998. It has a, another four and a half year trough in the year 2003, and um, then it puts um, another four and a half year trough in um, in October of 
um, of 2008. Now, that's, that in itself is a, is a very debatable um, uh, placement of the trough, and with a little bit of um, fiddling around, I could um, generate a slightly um, um, more likely analysis by, um, by uh, having the trough placed in, um, in either 2007 or 2008. But uh, I don't, don't want to get too hung up on, on, on those details um, just, uh, just yet. What I'd, what I'd like to point out is uh, some really interesting correlations, and, um, and I've chosen two sort of uh, uh, periods to do this. And, um, and, and then we're going to look at what's happening in the markets at the moment, of course, which is, which is what everybody uh, wants to know. But um, if you have a look at the general shape of the market, um, you'll, you'll notice immediately if you're, if you're used to looking at analyses of the S&P 500 or the um, uh, North American um, stock market, um, you'll, you'll notice immediately many similarities and, um, and of course, some subtle differences. Um, uh, you've got the sort of classic, um, what looks like a, a sort of a, a double top, um, uh, you know, very, very broad terms um, um, happening uh, over here. And it looks uh, much clearer if I, if I change that to a weekly chart. Um, so that's the uh, South African market. That's the all share index. And uh, let's take a look at the um, Bombay Stock Exchange. Um, let me uh, zoom all the way out. And uh, here we go. I've also got data going back to... Um, 1997, and um, again, and let me make these charts look a little more like each other by making this a line on median chart, and um, and and again, I think you can see some uh, some similarities immediately um, between these two charts. Um, uh, let me switch back to the long term. Uh, there we go. There's the long-term um, all-share index from South Africa, and um, here is the um, Sensex from um, from Bombay. Um, uh, the index um, uh, from Bombay. So you can see um, immediately that there are several similarities. The, the the bigger picture is really very similar. But when you start looking at the details, um, you realise that there are several differences. For instance, let's focus on uh, on what's happening over here. Um, here you can see, uh, let me put on the semicircles again, uh, a four and a half year trough. This is um, the, the uh, Sensex, a four and a half year trough in 2007. Uh, in, uh, is that March? I think that's, uh, I think that's March of 2007. There's, uh, there's, there's a four and a half year um, uh, trough. And if we go back to the um, all share index, the South African one, you will see that Sentient Trader has not positioned a four and a half year trough in uh, 2007. It has positioned a four and a half year trough in 2008. And if we have a look at the price um, movement, let me zoom in from beginning of 2007 to beginning of 2009. There we go. And um, uh, there we go. Let me turn off the phasing so we can just use our eyes for a moment. And um, 2007 to 2009, and um, turn off the phasing, and let's make this daily. All right, so this is the Indian market. This is that price movement, and I pointed out earlier that in 2007, um, in March, of course, there was a four and a half year cycle trough uh, positioned at that point over there. Now let's have a look at the uh, at the South African market, and you can see that actually it's uh, quite quite a different um, price movement, and um, and uh, you can see why in March of 2007. Uh, let me let me just zoom in and get the scaling right. Did I go 2007? Let me just. Um, 2007, 2008, 2009. There we go. That's, a, that's a, um, exactly the same scaling. So there you can see the, the difference between, uh, between the two price movements.